This is a video to demonstrate the solder paste process and use of the reflow oven. When you get your manual paste stencil kit, you're going to get two guide pieces like this. They're just plastic and you just need a flat desk. And in my case, I need two PC boards together to match up to the thickness of this. For your ring PCB um, arrays, I think you'll need to stack three. But the, the point is the top surface of these, the, the top circuit board that you want to put the paste on must be even with this guide piece. So the idea is you set up these guide pieces and so your boards are in there nice and tight and then you just use masking tape to tape down the guide pieces and that way you can swap out circuit boards each time you print one. I've already set up a stencil over here on the right and you can see over here I've got my solder paste and this is a room temperature and it's mixed up and I just use a popsicle stick for that and you can see here my guide is taped down and I'm gonna take a the board I want to print and on mine it's a real tight fit which is what you want because you want this to be put in the same place every time and check all the way around to make sure that that circuit board is the same height as the guide and place the stencil down on there and you also want to make sure just take a look at the top and make sure that the pads are still aligned properly and then put a liberal amount of solder paste here at the edge hold the squeegee at about a 45 degree angle and slowly drag over the stencil Oops, my recorder was full. Picking up where we left off, we just got done dragging the stencil over, or the squeegee with the paste over the stencil. And you can kind of just look here and make sure all the pads are filled. If some of the pads are not filled with paste, do not squeegee a second time. If you squeegee a second time, too much paste is gonna get on the rest of the pads. So if you miss some pads, that's too bad. You'll just have to manually repair those towards the end. And then uh, you just want to carefully lift up straight up to make sure that you don't smudge the paste. From here on out you have to be very careful handling the boards. As you can see here I'm going to use some tweezers to help get the board out of here so I don't smudge the paste. Typically as a rule of thumb while there's paste on here I only handle the array by the rails. By the rails at either end. This is a this will just this is a good rule to help keep you from getting your fingers on there and smudging the paste. Okay, literally all you do now is get some tweezers, get a bin full of the parts that you need, and start picking the parts and placing them uh, on the pads. So I will place all the parts on one chip here so you can see it.
I'm just doing one PC board this time, all the components, but after, the, after this I'm going to show you the process I really use to do a whole panel. It's much easier to place one component at a time on all of the panels. This uh, is a vacuum suction tool. It's a hand tool. It costs about $80. I use this for placing microchips. Got one more piece here. Okay, the nice thing here is you don't have to get the parts perfectly centered on the solder pads. Uh, later on when the solder melts in the oven, these parts are going to align themselves. So I'm going to zoom out and show you what I actually usually do when I assemble the whole panel. What I'll actually do, for example, is I will place uh, let's say I've got capacitor C4 here. I'll actually place, pull out a bunch of the capacitors for C4, and I'll place all the C4 parts first. The reason I do that is that I can put, you know, pull all these parts out and dump them on the table that's a little bit faster to get to with the tweezers this way. Plus, it's just less thinking. Your brain just has to say to itself, you know, C4, C4, C4. It's always putting the part in the same spot on each circuit board. And when I'm done with that part, I put the excess back in the tray. This is going to go a little bit slower if you're placing LEDs because you have to stop, pick up, and look for that polarity marker before you can place the LED. Capacitors and resistors have no polarity, so they can go in any direction, so those are going to go faster. So all of these parts I have here don't have any polarity, and I can place about 400 to 600 components per hour and so a uh, good tech even if he has to do LEDs should be able to place two or three hundred an hour especially if he's mixing in some resistors there And you'll notice throughout the process I'm going to turn the board for no other reason than it makes it uh, easier to place some of these parts. It's easier to turn the board than to turn my hand. The other nice thing about this process is if you're picking parts here and you just realize that you put a part on backwards, uh, there's no reason you can't go back to that part and pick it up again. 
So this process allows you to catch your mistakes sooner. I'm going to zoom in on my tweezers here to show you the angle that I'm using that I'm using to pick up these parts. So basically I'm, I'm laying it long ways and picking up the part in the middle like this. This is a lot easier. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder if you're trying to pick up the part the long ways this way that's not going to work for you. So the best way to pick up these parts is to pick it up in the middle like this. Zoom in here for you. I missed a part there when I had the board turned the other direction. really cannot drink soda or coffee and do this work. Your techs are going to be a lot slower. You're better off having a tech coming an hour late if you get some sleep rather than loading up on Rockstar. Right now I'm struggling a little bit because I haven't had dinner either. So Same thing goes for lunch breaks. You're better off to stop and get something to eat every couple of hours and have a snack rather than uh, working for really long periods of time. If your hands are really not steady you can you can kind of use both hands. You can use uh, your finger from your opposite hand to try to help steady that which is what I'm doing here.
especially when placing the microchips those need to be a little more accurate you can bump them a little bit but you don't want to smear that paste too much good rule of thumb is if you don't get the part in the center on the first time uh, you can bump it once and then after that you probably have to give up Twenty more parts to go. Again, with these parts, you're, you don't have to be too accurate. When the solder melts, it's going to draw the part into place. Okay, that's it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight components on each board right now. That'll increase when I get the ring PCB edition for this, but that's 160 components in one panel. Did that in about 20 minutes. Sorry, the camcorder was full again. As I was just saying, there were 160 components on this panel. I did that in 20 minutes, so at this rate, my comp I can place 480 components an hour on your ring PCB with 50 ring PCBs that's 800 components so theoretically I could place a whole ring PCB in under an hour okay we're literally gonna go put this in an oven This is it, this is the reflow oven. It's pretty simple, it's got a drawer. This is where the PCB goes. Your model is gonna be larger. Uh, it's got a couple of controls. This is kind of a cheap model. But it works for what we are doing. Uh, it's already been programmed. We'll have to send you instructions separately on how to program and get this reflow oven configured, but literally put it in, put your circuit board in the tray, close the drawer, hit the run button. Uh, you wait about five to 10 minutes. And when you are done, an assembled circuit board will come out.
While we're waiting for that to finish, I will show you the piece of equipment I purchased originally, and that is a hot air gun on a nice reticulating arm. And what I bought this for is that you can set circuit boards in here and apply heat to specific uh, parts of the circuit board for touch up. Inevitably, uh, out of this oven, a few of the components you'll find you didn't place them right.